This other approach that allows for a more flexible seasonal signal to come through is called season trend decomposition using low S. It is similar conceptually to what we've been talking about so far. It fits a trend, it fits a seasonal signal, it, whatever's left over from those two goes into this irregular component. How it does those pieces is a little different. It doesn't use a moving average. It uses, it still uses windows uh, where it's calculating kind of a kind of a weighted average, but it's doing so through a weighted regression approach. And then instead of calculating this trend and extracting it and saying it's done, it tends to do an iterative approach with the seasonal data. So it fits one and then fits the other and then fits it back so that it can see how that seasonal signal may be changing because some of that signal that's going into the long-term trend may actually be part of the seasonal signal that's changing over time. So it does this iterative approach so it can kind of find the best division of that, that information between those two different time scales. Beyond that, I'm not gonna go into any details on how it's going about what it's doing, um, but you can Google that and look into that if you're interested. Obviously the big bonus to the season trend decomposition using low S, often referred to as STL, um, is this flexibility in the seasons. It does have a couple of drawbacks. Um, one is that it is only has an additive uh, approach for doing the time series decomposition. So if you have data where clearly your seasonal sig signal is amplifying a lot with your value as it increases over time or decreases over time, um, then you're going to have to find a, a different way of, of doing this. The other issue with this approach is that it is a little more complicated to implement in that you're not only setting your window size for the trend analysis, but there's also another window size that you have to think about for your seasonal analysis. And setting these window sizes, are there's no there's no rules to it. it. It really is more of an art than a science. Um, and so the, this is a, a really a squishy part of doing a time series decomposition analysis is choosing that window size. And now you have two different window sizes to choose. When you're having to set these window sizes, there is one rule that you need to follow. And that is that your trend window must be larger than your seasonal window. You can't have a tiny trend window and a large seasonal window. That trend window always has to be larger. So let's play around with the SDL approach and see what it gives us that may differ from uh, the decompose function that we just explored. So let's play with STL and see what it does. I'm going to generate a new variable name to store the information coming from the STL function. I'm going to call it fit STL. And I'm going to use the STL function, which is coming from base R. Let's give it our observed data. There are two window sizes, as I mentioned, that need to be specified for the STL to function. The trend window actually has default settings to it, so you don't have to specify it. It can calculate those. It will calculate a rule of thumb size for your trend window. But the seasonal window is something you have to specify. The seasonal window is the number of years that you want used in order to calculate that seasonal signal. So when you set that seasonal window, this function will auto, can automatically calculate a trend window that fits certain criteria that are necessary for SDL to work. So we're just gonna give it an S window of uh, 10 years, and then let's run it and see what happens. Let's now plot fit STL. And let me increase this size over here so that we can look at the output. All right, so what we see is something that's very similar to the output that came from Decompose. On the top, we have our actual data. This is the, the data that's being stored in ndbi.ts. The order now is different with STL. The second plot is our seasonal signal the third plot down is our trend, and the final is that remainder in the data. If we start with the trend, it doesn't look that much different from what we've been uh, generating from the decompose. The seasonal signal now looks really different, and what we can see is that the method is pulling out changes in that seasonal signal over time now. And 
with fairly even uh, weighting of that winter and summer greenness early on in the time series that then amplifies and moves more towards summer greenness um, as the time series moves on and then starts to perhaps dampen it down a little bit towards the end. And that's really exciting. That's one of these kind of ecological signals in our data that we might be really interested in being able to disentangle. That's one of the advantages of using one of these more flexible approaches, especially if you are particularly interested in those dynamics at the seasonal scale.